Welcome to the Freedom Fries channel. I'm Fries. That's freedom. And this is the Seat Time 350Z. Today, let's talk about seats and harnesses. Why are they important? What are the best brackets for the 350Z? Why are you still watching my channel? I don't know. Intro. You spend most of your time inside the car. So modifying the outside and doing nothing for the interior essentially turns your car into an Instagram model. Beautiful on the outside, empty on the inside, and full of daddy issues. Not that I'm complaining. Seats, harnesses, and a couple aesthetic modifications can really change your driving experience in the 350Z. Also, the stock interior is just really boring, and we want to be cool. So let's rice this thing out. So why do we want to upgrade our seats? Well, if you're a vaping stance boy, it's because you want street cred, like this is Need for Speed or something. But if you actually drive the car, there's a ton of benefits. Like, it will hold you much tighter than your father ever did, which is important because this is nice. Also, it's going to help you drive. A well-fitted seat is going to keep you from bracing your body against the chassis while you're sliding, which is great because you can do more of this and less of this. Not having to brace your body against the chassis is great because it's going to reduce fatigue throughout the event. In addition, when you brace yourself against the car, it's going to make your legs look like bruised apples by the end of the day. Picking a seat really comes down to four factors. Safety rating, fitment and comfortability level, weight, and finally price. I wanted something that was FIA approved, relatively inexpensive, and would fit my weird body proportions. So I picked up Sparco's Evo QRT. This is Sparco's lightest seat at this price point, and the Evo will fit big boys like myself. Two weeks after purchasing this seat, I found out most risk organizations want you to have a halo seat or a head restraint device. And since I don't have a halo seat, I have to get a head restraint device. So that's annoying. For my passenger seat, I'm going to be running a knockoff Brit I've had for 10 years. So the reason I'm running this seat is twofold. One, I already had it, so it's free. And two, it's a very tight fitting seat. So anyone with larger than a 36 inch waist won't be able to sit in the car. So in a way, it's kind of like a lightweight mod. Sorry, thick boys. Now I know what you're thinking. Fries, there's no way that's FIA approved. And you're absolutely right. But I don't care about the safety of my passengers. So ride along at your own risk. Your factory seats come with their own mounts. When you buy an aftermarket racing seat, you're going to need to purchase mounts so that you can install the seat into your car. The two most popular brands are the Super Low from Buddy Club, which is a joke because it sits you higher than any other mount option on the market, and the planted seat mounts, which is also a joke because you have to cut and re-weld it so that your seat does not sit higher than the factory location. After some research, I found PCI Racing. PCI Racing makes a mount that will put your seating position much lower than anything else that's offered on the market, and it's compatible with all aftermarket racing seats. Now that the seats are mocked up, we need to worry about our restraint system. And harnesses are one of those things that people do just to look cool, but they're also extremely important because in this current seating configuration, the factory seatbelt would be directly across my neck, which could turn out horribly if I get in an accident. Now there's a ton of different harnesses to choose from and a ton of different configurations, but the one thing you need to worry about is that it's FIA approved. Oh, what's up, Bane? How you doing? Anyway. As you found out from my video, harness position is extremely important because you don't want to kill yourself by having a harness across your neck. So in order to correct the harness positioning for my chest straps, I'm going to be running a harness bar. I could have used a roll bar, but if I'm going to do a roll bar, I might as well do a roll cage. And you only need a roll cage when you're tandeming. And I have no business tandeming because I'm horrible at drifting. Now that I've explained that all to you, we're gonna go ahead and put the seats, these ricer harnesses, and these aesthetic upgrades into the car. Because like I said in the beginning, it's what's on the inside that counts. She's gotta be pretty too though.
race car. This thing turned out so nice, I almost feel bad for what I'm gonna do to it this year. Almost. There's actually one more benefit of these harnesses that I didn't talk about earlier. When you see the car at the track, you're gonna see the harnesses, you're gonna know who I am, and you're gonna thank me for my service. I'm just kidding, don't do that, but you're welcome. And on that note, I wanna thank the continued war against terrorism in the Middle East for sponsoring this build. Thanks guys, keep it up. Now, much like my dating life, I don't know how to close, so see you next time. Turn up the street.